So what are we cooking today, you ask? Well, we're cooking chicken tikka masala. Chicken tikka masala is a thick gravy, or as many people say, I, I've seen people using the word sauce a lot. <coughs> well, for the same exact thing, we would call it a curry here. So I think it's just how we term it differently. But it's a it's a dish that has a really flavorful and thick tomato based gravy or sauce. And then you have chicken, which traditionally chicken tikka is cooked in a clay oven uh, in tandoor. It's um, stuck onto the piercing rod or whatever, like the huge rod that you place into an oven. Um, then it's stuck into an oven. It's cooked with charcoal and the heat. There's almost no oil in cooking a, the chicken tikka in itself. It gets this nice charred, smoky flavor. And then the pieces of chicken tikka, which are marinated in simple things like yogurt, red chili powder, um, salt and turmeric powder, garam masala, the usual things. Uh, those things are it, the each piece of chicken tikka is cooked in the clay oven and then added to the tomato base or gravy or sauce as you call it now cooking chicken tikka at home you'll be facing your first big hurdle is you don't have a clay oven so your first hurdle is going to be to give it that give your chicken the charred taste um, the taste that it would get in a clay oven being cooked by charcoal and such. Uh, there's a simple tip that we will learn in this recipe on how you can give that charred flavor to your chicken, but in doing so at home, you'll be using oil um, and the, the traditional chicken tikka pieces wouldn't have much of oil by itself. So there's one little drawback there, but I don't think it's that major of a drawback. In the end, the taste is exactly the same. The flavor is exactly the same because we'll be smoking it yeah, for a substantial amount of time using charcoal, we'll be smoking the chicken and the cooking process gets it as close as it, as it can to a chicken tikka. So yeah, uh, to start out this dish, of course, it's called chicken tikka masala. So you will need chicken. Uh, I, this is boneless chicken breast, which has been cut into bite-sized pieces. You can see how big the pieces are. They aren't too huge. They aren't too small. Um, is just cut into bite-sized pieces. This is a kilogram of chicken that has been washed in turmeric and salt. To this, we'll be adding yogurt or plain curds, plain thick curds. We'll be adding 250 milliliters of yogurt or thick curds. So we're going to prepare the marinade first. For the chicken tikka masala, we're going to create the marinade for the chicken and you need to leave this marinade for at least 60 minutes before you cook it. Uh, it would be ideal if you could leave it for four hours, but 60 minutes is the minimum. Once you add in your curds, you'll be adding in lemon juice. You'll require the juice of two fresh lemons. I am not going to filter out the seeds because during the cooking process of this chicken, the seeds won't matter much. Uh, but, so I'm just taking these fresh lemons and squeezing out the juice and making sure to uh, spread out the lemon juice as I am drizzling it over our chicken. The curds and lemon together create a little bit of sourness, soften the meat as well and uh, basically also give a really nice creamy texture to your chicken, to the chicken pieces. Marinating chicken in yogurt or curds uh, along with lime both are tenderizers and the lime kind of brings out the sourness in the yogurt or curds so it's used to um, flavor the chicken give the chicken a bit more sour flavor you'll be adding in one uh, tablespoon of ginger garlic paste to your chicken marinade <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that then for the powdered spices in the marinade you will need Kashmiri red chili powder. Kashmiri red chili powder is stronger in its natural red color and weaker in its spice levels. So I have taken four teaspoons of Kashmiri red chili powder. You'll need turmeric, one teaspoon, 
and then you'll need coriander powder uh, that would be uh, sorry I'm, I'm sorry it's not co coriander powder it's cumin powder you'll require one teaspoon of cumin powder uh, use the command explanation mark recipe on chat if you're watching live and if you're watching on YouTube you'll find the link to the recipe in the com uh, in the description those are the first powdered spices to go in red chili powder turmeric and cumin powder I'm just trying to smack it out of my prep bowl and then we have our last two powdered spices going in which is garam masala two and a half teaspoons and a generic tandoori chicken masala <coughs> so we spoke about these generic chicken masalas generic pre-packaged chicken powders chicken masalas um, you can find them in a store nearby and it's probably easier to get your hands on these on these pre-made chicken spices compared to fresh spices so we're here using just a generic tandoori chicken masala which is uh, a mixture of various different spices to aid in that uh, getting the flavor the charred flavor the tikka um, taste so those go in to your marinade as well and once your spices are in we're going to start uh, massaging our chicken but before that we're going to add in the final content to our marinade which is salt I'm adding in two teaspoons of salt salt is purely out of taste uh, whatever your seasoning levels are make sure that it's balanced with the other spices that you add the salt needs to be in line with all the other spices I'm cooking a kilo of chicken here uh, so you'll have to modify the amounts that you put in based on the amount of chicken that you're cooking uh, and I'm of course cooking for five people or actually this was actually for seven people um, if you're cooking for two or three people your quantity will definitely be a lot lower than what I am cooking so yeah just make sure to manage the quantity based on uh, the quantity of chicken you're cooking you start massaging your marinade onto your chicken you want each chicken coated well with this marinade and honestly uh, I see a lot of people <coughs> hesitant about using their hands to marinate chicken or mix chicken using your bare hands of course maintain good hygiene uh, wash your hands before handling raw chicken and wash your hands after uh, handling raw chicken hopefully with a nice soap and you, your hands are more clean than say using a gloves or using a disposable gloves or plastic gloves or anything like that and uh, there are times where if you're if you like if you're putting uh, green chilies into your marinade you may need to wear gloves so that your hands don't start burning but it's really situational and most of the time just having your just mixing it up with your hands rather than a ladle or wearing disposable gloves is better because you can massage each piece of chicken and make sure that the marinade is mixed well spend some time mixing it and making sure that all the chicken pieces get coated in this marinade because we are going to be searing the chicken uh, individually as individual pieces on a pan <coughs> so you want all the spices all the uh, uh, ingredients that you just put into this marinade to mix well with your chicken pieces and you can see the chicken gets a nice coat of the marinade and the texture of that chicken once it's cooked is going to be really great as well all those little spices if you let it rest for one hour you need to let the marinade rest for a minimum of one hour it's going to stick to your pieces of chicken and it's going to cook beautifully it takes it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to have it um, massaged properly you, if you want to do it quick you can wrap it up in six minutes but as I always say the more love you put into marinating your chicken the more you massage it the more you make sure that the spices are getting into your chicken pieces the better it's going to taste and this is uh, after having massaged it and mixed it for close to 10 minutes it's I set it aside for an hour 
and I take a really large pan uh, and put it on my stove. I start heating up the pan. It's a really large flat pan and I add some oil to the pan. There's no specific quantities of oil that you need to add. You can use as little or as much as you want, honestly. Um, just make sure that the oil is spread throughout the pan. Use a fancy brush if you would. And you will start taking each individual pieces of your chicken and placing them in your pan. Make sure that they don't touch each other. Uh, you need to space them out well. You're going to be searing them on high heat. While you're placing the chicken, make sure that your pan uh, you make sure that your stove is on low heat and when you have placed all your chicken you're going to start searing them uh, on each side they need to sear for three minutes on high heat and they get a really nice a charred coat and that's what we are going for so you see I'm placing out my chicken individual pieces spacing them well I you need to do this in multiple batches and you can hear the chicken as well sizzling, searing. That's what you're going to go for. Uh, the the nice sizzle that you're hearing. You'll be searing each side of the chicken for three minutes on high heat. If your pieces are cut in different sizes and are not um, equally sized, some pieces are going to sear faster than the others. So just keep an eye out. You're going to need to start flipping the chicken pieces once three minutes has been spent on one side. Let's hear the chicken again. And look at that. I start turning the chicken once three minutes has passed and you see the texture that the chicken gets. The nice little oops that chicken didn't want to be cooked and just decided to jump out but too bad we're gonna grab it back again and put it on the pan um we want that nice little char the sear we're just giving it the burnt flavor that it would have um in a, an actual tandoor so you want that nice golden brown sear on each side Depending on the size of your pieces, the chicken pieces, some may need more side, more time to uh, sear on each side, but three minutes on each side should do the job. And remember that the pan is going to be warmer and hotter after your first batch is cooked. So your second batch is going to get an even better color, an even better sear, and it's going to be fantastic. Meanwhile, uh, to proceed further with our um, charred approach uh, the smoky flavors that we want to induce in this chicken I have taken two pieces of charcoal and I have put them I've started heating them up on my stove on high heat so you let them start heating up they're going to start burning in as you cook your chicken the charcoal requires a lot of time to heat up so start heating it up when you're um, searing your chicken so that by the time your chicken is done it's ready the charcoal is ready to get um, is ready for the smoking process and look at that nice coat that the chicken has uh, got I'm just going to let it be on the pan for some more time I'm going to start removing the smaller pieces and I'm going to be collecting all the chicken pieces in a bowl look at that Look at that coat. That's what you want to go for. The chicken is not going to be cooked. You're just searing the chicken uh, on high heat to give it a nice little uh, burnt kind of flavor, a charred flavor. Start picking up your chicken pieces, checking if they're charred enough, and um, you're going to start collecting them in a bowl. Do this until all your chicken pieces are done. If a few require a few pieces still required to be charred grab them and push push them towards the center of your pan where it's going to be the hottest and you're going to just let it char or sear for some more time in the center of your pan <coughs> you're not going to leave out all those burnt bits on your pan it's going to aid the flavor that we are going for so you're going to scrape them gently 
collect all the bits it's not going to be burnt completely it's just charred it may look like bits of paper that's burnt out but it's the spices and the masala the marinade that's just fried to a crisp and it's going to aid the flavor as i said the charred flavor that we're going for so don't leave anything in the pan uh, you're going to take everything and put on your second batch I, I needed to cook it in three batches so I placed all the chicken uh, my second batch of chicken and I'm going to drizzle some oil on top of them drizzling the oil is completely optional I do it because I wanted to but you don't need to drizzle the oil the oil you initially added to the pan should be enough but since I'm cooking a large quantity of chicken I felt the need to drizzle some oil But the chicken which is being seared is going to leave out a really really nice aroma because of the marinade that it was in <clears throat> and look at that color the second batch since the pans warmer is going to not require you to put in any extra effort three minutes on each side and it's going to get a nice little char nice little sear be gentle while flipping over your chicken pieces you don't want to break them apart <clears throat> carefully pick them up and turn them around make sure that the chicken piece makes full and complete contact with the pan once it's turned you need to take your time and be gentle rushing it would only break apart the chicken and make things uh, tougher for you to collect Restaurants and hotels do this all easily because they have a clay oven, you know, it takes them a max of say 10 minutes to have the chicken tikka cooked, but you don't have the luxury of having a clay oven at home unless you have a completely decked out kitchen that is, you know, so this is the second best method of making chicken tikka at home uh, or you can buy um, a grilling, not a grilling machine, but a tikka machine or, you know, you get these boxes that try to tandoor things in your home, but it doesn't really work as well. Uh, here is all my chicken that's been seared. I collected all the little burnt bits and such. That's my pan. I cooled it down because it was quite hot. And I've placed a big bowl in the center of my collected chicken to which I'm going into which I'm going to place my coal. Hot piece of coal. You gotta be careful while handling your coal. Don't burn yourself. And don't burn anything else look at all that oil splattered on my stove top once you take your charcoal um, and place it in the center of your at of your bowl with your chicken make sure that the lid of the bowl that you have placed your chicken is is by your side you're going to drop in a tablespoon of oil on the hot charcoal it's going to start smoking and you cover your bowl immediately and you let this smoke Oops, I'm sorry. You let this smoke uh, until you require the chicken in your sauce, in your curry. In a karai, I have heated up some oil and in goes my first spice, my whole spice. <coughs> so while the chicken is um, smoking, we are going to create our sauce or the curry. I'm going to put in my first whole spice, which is cumin. Uh, I need two teaspoons of cumin. Two teaspoons of cumin go in and my green chilies i have taken um, eight green chilies which have been slit through the center and i'm going to start sauteing this on high heat for 60 seconds af after which it should be cooked the chilies as well as the cumin should be done listen in on the chilies crackling There was my doorbell going off while I was cooking. So you're going to saute this for 60 seconds. Your chilies are going to get fried nicely. Your cumin is going to be done. And the oil that you're using is going to be flavored with cumin as well as the heat from your green chilies.
Once your green chilies and cumin are done, we're going to take sliced onions. I have sliced up three large red onions. Our sliced onions go in. And we are going to follow up our sliced onions with some salt. Remember that your chicken marinade has salt too. So while adding salt to brown your onions, uh, make sure that you don't add excess amounts of salt. You're going to now start browning the onions. We don't need to completely brown it for this dish. We're just going to brown the onions or cook the onions until they lose their bright pink color, which they have now. And they turn translucent. So we don't want to completely brown them. We just want them to lose their bright pink color and turn translucent. Chicken tikka masala, if you have had it at restaurants or anywhere else, is always this really silky smooth curry, a really silky smooth base uh, with pieces of chicken. You don't really get a bite of onions or a bite of green chilies or you don't get a bite of anything apart from the gravy, the sauce and the chicken. And the secret to that is blending in your onions once they are translucent. So you're going to wait until your onions are translucent. It should take around um, four, four and a half minutes on high heat. You need to keep sauteing them. Make sure that you're breaking up slices and that they're not bunched together. The salt is going to aid in the onions browning or cooking or sweating in general. <clears throat> you can see them starting to lose their bright pink color already from when we added it first and now the bright pink color has um, reduced and it's starting to turn translucent it's starting to turn white you need to keep continuing to cook them for some more time until they're ready to be transferred to a blender and blended into a fine paste Browning onions or cooking onions is one of my favorite part of any dish just because of the sound it makes while cooking. This is the translucent, uh, this is the texture you're going for. The, uh, you want the onions to be translucent like this. Um, it's lost its bright pink color, it's translucent and it's ready to be put into a blender and grind, grind it into a fine paste. But before that, we're going to take in some more spices. Uh, powdered spices we have put in some powdered spices to our chicken to the marinade but the curry the sauce also needs some powdered spices so these spices that you will be taking for your curry or the base would be red chili powder this is again kashmiri red chili powder which has a stronger red color and a and a weaker spice level uh, then you'll be taking Turmeric, one teaspoon, Kashmiri red chili powder, three teaspoons. Um, and we are going to be taking in coriander powder this time. We put in cumin powder for our marinade. Coriander powder goes in to our curry or base. Those are the first three spices to go in. And the other two spices that go in are your garam masala and your tandoori chicken masala. The same that we added to our marinade also goes into the sauce. <coughs> Once your spices are in, you'll start sauteing your onions and spices so that the spices cook through. It should take uh, approximately 60 seconds for your spices to cook. And once your spices are cooked and your onions are your, your, your onions are already done. You just basically need to cook your spices. You don't want to put raw spices into a blender. So cook your spices for 60 seconds on high heat. Keep sauteing it, keep uh, mixing it, keep stirring it because your spices are going to burn on high heat if you don't constantly keep stirring. So saute it for uh, 60 seconds. Your spices should be cooked. After which we'll be blending it all together. You see, you see the red color that the onions have taken. 
that's due to the natural coloring agent that is the Kashmiri red chili powder and you think that oh my goodness three teaspoons of red chili powder is this crazy but as I said Kashmiri red chili powder compared to your regular red chili powder has really low levels of heat and honestly when we are using Kashmiri red chili powder since we are used to food that has a higher spice level a higher heat um, we add more of it so once the spices are cooked which should take 60 seconds approximately we transfer them into we transfer all the contents of our karai into the blender and we're going to blend this into a fine paste should take 40 seconds just one simple blend and look at that it's turned into uh, a paste so the onion paste is ready you're going to grab some ghee or clarified butter going to add in two tablespoons of ghee to your karai and once the ghee heats up the paste the onion paste that you just freshly grinded is going to go back in to the karai let your ghee absorb all the flavors within the karai while it's heating up and then you're going to add in the paste that you just made you're going to saute it just so that it starts cooking in the ghee you're going to saute it for 30 seconds uh, at max so that the ghee gets absorbed and also takes in all the flavor of our onion paste and once you saute it for 30 seconds you're going to add in tomato puree this is um, I have used tomato puree in a lot of dishes that I've cooked till now and always always I use fresh tomato puree I don't have canned or boxed tomato puree I take I've taken four fresh tomatoes put it into a blender and uh, turned it into puree uh, it has its seeds it has everything I haven't filtered it out so four large fresh tomatoes turned into puree goes straight in and you start cooking your tomato with the onion paste that you just made so this is where the nice silky smooth texture of the curry would come from everything has been turned into a paste there's nothing that you would be feel in your mouth apart from the sauce and the chicken tikka so that's the magic that's the magic behind this dish you'll start cooking your tomato and your tomatoes are going to take at least eight to nine minutes to cook properly you want to make sure that you cook your tomatoes properly because you don't want them to be raw raw tomatoes in a curry will only sour the curry <coughs> fully cooked tomatoes will add acidity a bit of sourness and a lot of flavor to your curry it's very easy to spoil any curry by undercooking your tomatoes so keep stirring while cooking your tomatoes it'll take eight minutes on high heat and to aid in the process of cooking if it's losing its moisture if it's losing its water content and it needs some more moisture to continue cooking you can add in 300 milliliters of water as you can see here the moisture level of my tomatoes have gone has gone down quite a bit but the tomatoes still need to cook so I decide to add in 300 milliliters of water into my curry and what this does is adding water not only helps cook the tomatoes it also thins out the base the sauce the curry a bit more because you don't want a really super thick curry at the same time you don't want a curry which is really thin and runny you want it somewhere in between you want it semi gravyish so you're not going for a complete runny gravy you're not going to go for uh, a really thick uh, gravy you're going to go for something in between and water will aid you cook the tomatoes as well as reach that required consistency in your sauce or in your curry 300 ml of water goes in and you'll start stirring everything again because you want the tomato and the onion base that you've been cooking to mix with the water that you just added 
it's all on high heat so the water is going to start boiling within two to two to two and a half to three minutes and look at that that's the consistency that we're going to go for it's going to it's going to thicken out a bit more by the time we're done cooking but that's going to be the sauce that's going to be the curry the base of this amazing chicken tikka masala I decided to showcase this recipe on a Saturday thinking that people could maybe cook it over the weekend but I think I made a mistake and I should have uh, maybe showed this on a Friday where people would maybe have two days like Saturday and Sunday to try and prep this at home but oh well you can always watch this back and try to prep this at home yourself so I'm going to taste check uh, for seasoning and as well as uh, to make sure all the spices and the tomatoes are cooked before I add in my chicken pieces. Uh, before adding in your, the chicken pieces, of course, you'll re remove the bowl that contained your charcoal and you're gonna place it away safely. Hot charcoal is really dangerous, so don't mess around with it. You're going to take your chicken that's just been smoked and sitting in that sm smoke for uh, approximately 20 minutes or 25 minutes because it took you that much time to get to this stage you're going to clear out your bowl completely and um, I had an oopsie I had an oopsie at this moment because when I added in the chicken I paused my video on my recording device my camera and I thought I, w I started re-recording it but I didn't so once you add in your chicken once you add in your chicken right after you add in your chicken you're going to add in some fresh cream you're going to add in two tablespoons of fresh cream and you're going to add in some kasuri methi or dried fenugreek leaves two teaspoons of kasuri methi two teaspoons uh, of two tablespoons of um, fresh cream and then you mix it well and let the curry cook for 10 minutes on high heat while covering your cookware or your karai and look at look at the creamy flavors the creamy color that your curry has now got and this this would look very familiar to you if you have eaten chicken tikka masala um, in in places it could probably be lighter in color but I have used Kashmiri red chili powder to give it a really strong red color and turmeric to balance out that red with a bit of yellow natural coloring agents to get it to a nice golden um, golden brown or you could call it dark red even maybe it depends on just how much Kashmiri red chili powder you add so I at this point I let my chicken cook on high heat for 15 minutes and the chicken is cooked you can make sure uh, if you're if you're not sure about your chicken having been cooked your chicken and curry both of both of them are cooked but if you're not sure that your chicken is cooked a simple way to make sure um, that your chicken is cooked is grab any single piece of chicken and try to try to break into it if the chicken piece breaks easily cuts into half easily that means the chickens cooked if it's still tough to break into if it's still tough to uh, cut it into two halves using just the ladle that means you need to cook your chicken for some more time but my chicken here easily splits when I apply a very little force so that that signals that your chicken is cooked and 15 minutes on high flame after it having been seared definitely is the chicken is well cooked you're going to be mixing the contents of your karai often and you're going to be mixing it well because you want everything mixed and everything nice uh, once your chicken is cooked you're going to garnish it with coriander the chicken and the curry this is going to add um, another color to your dish so you're going to see some green as well as coriander has its own flavor and works really well as a garnishing so at this point your karai or your cookware should be on low heat add in one bunch of chopped coriander and stir well
Hello, Piti. Wow, you just you just tune in as we add coriander. What's with you, Piti? You dislike coriander, and the minute I put coriander into my curry is when you appear. What timing? You mix you mix your coriander uh, garnishing with your curry, and you let the curry rest for five minutes after your coriander is gone in. After those five minutes, your chicken tikka masala is ready to serve. Some delicious homemade chicken tikka masala. It's um, by far a hundred times better tasting than any chicken tikka masala that I've had outside. I I just took all of it in a bowl, and then I didn't have it beside rice or roti. This is just the chicken tikka masala in all its glory. And we enjoyed it with rice, but you can have it with naan, you can have it with roti. I think it would go really well with roti. Um, and it would go really well with jeera rice, which I taught you how to cook yesterday. Jeera rice and chicken tikka masala. Mm. You could also make ghee rice, which is basically you take cooked rice, you take cashew nuts, um, you take bay leaf, you take cumin, you take green cardamom, you take uh, green cardamom, four pods, cumin, two teaspoons, two bay leaves, uh, cashew nuts, add them all to hot oil, let them sizzle, let them cook, then add in your rice and salt, mix it all well, and you have a really good flavored ghee rice. Um, substitute oil with ghee, that's where the name comes with, but if you want to use oil and you don't have access to ghee, you can use oil as well. You can still call it ghee rice because you're using you're using the bay leaf. You're, you're just creating a really flavorful rice dish. So, Piti, did you eat or did you come to get hungry? Because we just finished cooking. And uh, <coughs> Matt requested for this dish. So, Matt, I hope this helps you. I hope you can cook this dish at your home. And if you if you want alternatives to any of the spices that I've used, if you want alternatives to any of the ingredients that I've used, ask me leave me a comment if you're watching this on youtube if you're watching this live ask me on chat and i can um i can assist you with knowing just what you can substitute certain things with because finding the exact ingredients everywhere is tough you get some ready-made powder ready-made spices too which can do the job so yeah just go ahead and feel free to ask uh, if you need substitutes 